If the United Nations IPCC climate models are wrong, why are they wrong? Dr. Roy Spencer was the Senior Scientist for Climate Studies at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center, where he received their Exceptional Scientific Achievement Medal for his work with Global Temperature Monitoring Satellites. He is now Principal Research Scientist at the University of Alabama, where he has been studying this very issue. What he has found is stunning in its implications. Ultimately, the whole global warming issue resides on how clouds will change with warming. The, depending on how clouds change with warming, it can either you know, fry us all or we'll never notice global warming. So there you go. All you need to know is how clouds change with warming. And it doesn't take a complex model to model that. We need to know how it, ha how it happens in nature, though. With all the complexity of the computer climate models, Spencer has found that they use the wrong assumptions. These assumptions have led them to believe that the Earth's climate is very sensitive. In other words, a small increase in temperature will be magnified to much larger increases in temperature that could cause runaway global warming. Now the question arises, why is it that all the climate modelers think that it's mankind causing it? Well, it's, it's because they think the climate system is really, really sensitive. Okay, It has positive feedbacks that if you poke it, it amplifies the effect. You know, if you warm it a little bit with more CO2, it greatly magnifies that. And when I used to ask people, how do we know that there's positive feedbacks in the real climate system? They would give me this example. When you have an unusually warm year on the Earth, typically you find there's less coverage by low clouds. And they would say, see, the warmer Earth caused fewer low clouds that lets more sunlight in, which amplifies the warming, positive feedback. And I always wondered, how do they know the warming caused fewer clouds, and it wasn't the fewer clouds that caused the warming. Well, it turns out they didn't know, and we came up with a simple climate model to show the issue of cause versus effect makes a difference, and we got it published, and I mean, two leading IPCC climate modelers said, yeah, we never thought of this. This is important. It totally amazed me. Uh, you know, because it was just a simple cause versus effect. And I think this is at the core of why the climate models are too sensitive, is that in view, looking at clouds and how clouds and temperature behave, they have ignored one direction of causation. When they see temperatures and clouds vary together, they always assume that it's the temperature causing the clouds to change and not the clouds causing the temperature to change. And to the extent you make that mistake, it will always look like a sensitive climate system. It is these models' oversensitivity that has caused many alarmists to proclaim that if we don't drastically reduce carbon emissions in the next 10 years, it will be too late. But we now know that that is incorrect. But how incorrect is it? Well, I th the IPCC is talking about warming by the end of this century of, what, two and a half to three degrees C? And the evidence I'm getting from uh, feedbacks is that that warming would be reduced to, like, half a degree C. So, yeah, you're talking, like, 80 90% overestimate of global warming from the models simply because of a mix-up between cause and effect. Although Dr. Spencer's hypothesis will be further defined, it means that the past warming has been mostly natural and humans must learn to cope with it if it continues.